what's up? Welcome back. How are you? Are you good? Great. Hey guys, welcome back to The Stimulus. I'm Steph Ebbs and oh my gosh, it has been an insane last week. Ah. So yeah, no sweat, I'm moving to the Bay Area in less than three weeks and I don't have an apartment picked out yet or stuff in boxes. You know, who's panicking? I'm not panicking, you're panicking. <laughs> no, but for real guys, I wanted to say thank you so much for hanging in there. I know I've been a regular. <laughs> not that Jamie Lee Curtis couldn't fix that with her Activia or whatever the yogurt is, but you know. <laughs> but I promise the channel is gonna get back on track. In fact, I have plans this week to absolutely hit my video deadlines. It's gonna be great. And then next weekend, I'm going back and looking for more apartments. So yeah, and then after that is Thanksgiving. And then after that, I move. <laughs> no stress, it's gonna be great. But this week I decided to do another episode of Ask Stars Ask because I haven't done one of those in a while. So sure, why not? So you questioned and now I'm going to answer and it's gonna be fun. Yes, stuff and things. By the way, if you hear plinking, it's because we're getting intermittent hail up here for once. So that's a thing. So I apologize in advance. The sound quality on this is going to be interesting. My dog won't bark. No barking, don't you bark. Please, okay, thanks. All right, let's get into it. Our first question comes from Justin at MC Count Chill, who says, of all the actors who have portrayed astronauts in films, who do you think did the best slash most realistic job of it? I loved Matt Damon as Mark Watney. So maybe that's just me being, you know, slightly biased about The Martian, but he was, re in recent memory, he's my favorite. Oh, but that, that's hard, because I also really, really loved, oh, oh god, I love Tom Hanks in Apollo 13. Oh no, it's getting difficult. I can tell you who I hated, and it's nothing against her, because I love her, but I hated Sandra Bullock in Gravity, and I hated George Clooney. I hate that movie. I hate it so hard. Oh no, thank god Ghost George Clooney is coming back to save me. Oh, and my poor feminine self. Oh god, I'm so emotional. No. I just, no. Just so much no. So much no with that movie. But yeah, in terms of most realistic, I really I really liked um, Matt Damon recently in The Martian, and then I love Apollo 13. That's probably one of my favorite movies ever. I don't know what that says about me. <laughs> but yeah, so there. There you go. Thank you for the question. Next up, at SM Pollard asks, favorite X-Men character? Oh no. This is kind of a tough question for me because I'm not really into X-Men as much as I am other Marvel characters and I'd say sorry, but I'm not because I'm allowed to like different things than you. But if I had to pick one, I'd probably say Rogue. I really liked her growing up. Um, I don't know if I was just drawn to her because she was a brunette and I was like, hey, you have brown hair and I can't find any Disney princesses besides Belle that have brown hair, so you're cool with your white streak, it's great, it's great. But yeah, in case you haven't noticed, I have that Rogue shirt that I actually think I wore. Did I wear that? I think I wore that the last ass that does. So yeah, let's, we'll go with Rogue, we'll go with Rogue. Yeah, totally. Thanks! Our next question comes from at Lonely Probe who asks, who's the best doctor? I'm going to assume you mean doctor out of Doctor Who because the D is capitalized, but if I was going to say, you know, just a regular doctor, then I hope it's any doctor that's working on me because you only want the best. Um, <laughs> But in terms of Doctor Who, I would probably have to say out of recent iterations because I haven't watched a whole lot of Classic Who. I know I'm such a terrible Whovian. and I haven't watched Classic Who. I'm working on it. It's on, some of it's on Netflix, so I'm working on working my way back in my free time, which I have none of. But of the recent regenerations, I'm cliche. I love David Tennant. I did. I loved Ten. I just did. I loved his style. I loved his humor. I love Ten. Ten will always hold a soft spot for me. And I know everybody loves Tenet. They do. Or Matt Smith. And you know, that's, it's like, I just, I just do. I love David Tennant. I'm sorry about it, but I'm not really. I just, I loved him to death. I thought he was my favorite doctor so far. I do have high hopes for Capaldi. And Matt Smith was good at times. Eccleston was all right. But that first season was just rough for me because that was my first introduction to Doctor Who. So when I'm watching the very first episode since they brought it back with like the mannequins, I'm like, man, I don't get this, but I stuck with it and stuck, I was so glad I did because now I'm a total, like, totally into Doctor Who and stuff like that. So I love Doctor Who. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna go with Tenet. I know, I'm cliche. So, I'm so unoriginal, oh god. <laughs> 
Our next question comes from at Biomech Speaks, who asks, what was your personal thought process about going or not going to grad school right after your bachelor's? Who influenced your decision? Honestly, that's a really great question. It was a very tough decision for me. I had a lot of friends that immediately did go and get their master's degrees, whether it was because they were totally ready and knew exactly what they wanted to study, or there was also those that went back and got their master's degrees because the job market sucks right now for engineers, especially aerospace engineers. A lot of places do want you to have a master's degree or three or three to five years of experience for entry level positions, which, which is kind of weird. You got to have experience to get experience. So, but that's, I won't even go into that. Um, for me personally, I wasn't entirely sure what I wanted to study for my master's degree. Um, if you had asked me three years ago when I read right, three and a half years ago now, if you asked me three and a half years ago, right when I graduated, what my master's degree was going to be in, I would likely have told you it would be something to do with mechanical engineering um, of aerospace structures because at the time that was where my interest lied. But at, I really wanted to go out and get experience in um, the industry and kind of be a little bit more certain about what I wanted to do. Now I think my love is more about systems engineering. I wanted to I wanted to be hands on. I'm, I'm still not sure, that's the thing though. I'm, I'm still not 100% sure what I want my master's degree in. I know I do want to go get a master's degree, but I've heard a lot of pros and cons about whether you want a thesis master's or a non-thesis master's and the advantage of getting a systems engineering master's versus an aerospace master's. So there's a lot to think about. For me personally, it was just A, I wanted the experience, the student loans were coming due and I didn't want to rack up any more student debt. And B, I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do. So I didn't want to go to school and start racking up student loans, like I said, if I wasn't sure where, where I was going to go with it. So that was a huge part of my decision behind not going directly to master's was that I just wasn't sure what I wanted to do with it. And the plan is that I will someday get the master's degree. Still not 100% sure what in yet, but I would like to kind of get more settled into my industry, which I'm going to be able to do now with a new space job, and then kind of figure out where to go from there. So yeah, thank you for the question. Next question comes from at C.E. Newman Zero, who asks, was going to ask what you miss most living so far from home, but probably sad. So how hard was it to take the first job so far away? Oh, it, 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 was, it was difficult, but at the same time, it was what I needed to do and I knew it. Um, at the time, I actually had an offer with Boeing in Oklahoma City also, but I just... The company that I interviewed with out here, uh, the military contractor I interviewed with out here, just made me, they flew me out, they made me feel like family, and the Boeing interview for me was a phone interview that lasted 25 minutes. I was asked generic questions and I felt like a number from the time I applied to the time that they sent me an offer in the mail and I was just like, ah. So ultimately, yes, 10 out of 10 would totally come to California again. It was absolutely terrifying though. The first time I had ever come to California was for the interview for this job. <laughs> and yeah, like small town girl, big city. I had never rented a car. They had got me a rental car for the interview. I had only flown by myself on a plane a couple of times and it was just like, whoa, <laughs> this is a whole new place. And then once I got the job, I had, I think three weeks to pack all my stuff into a truck and drive 1800 miles out here. It was terrifying, but yeah, when I sit back and I think about whether or not I would do this all again, I totally would do it. As for the thing that I missed the most, you know, aside from family, which is obvious, I miss barbecue. I do. Out here there's no good barbecue places. I miss really good ribs and really good wings and maybe I'll find that down in the Bay Area, but it's not here in Sacramento. There's just no good barbecue. Like, ugh. I miss Pappy's ribs in St. Louis. That's what I miss the most. Besides family, of course. Our next question comes from at Rob Cabrera, who asks, why didn't Imperial Engineers of the Death Star 2 design cannons for the Millennium Falcon-sized exhaust port? Because they, clearly they weren't the best engineers in the world. I don't know why you would leave something that gaping exposed with no kind of defense system. But, you know, clearly it was just not well thought out and by any means. Of course, if you think back to the original Death Star design, they weren't that concerned with vulnerabilities either. Granted, it was a much smaller hole to shoot stuff down. <laughs> um, pervert. But still, engineering 101, you don't design in failures, it's just stupid. You don't design in this one thing that if they hit it just right, it's gonna like cause a catastrophic failure. I was annoyed. So long story short, why didn't they design it in? Because the good guys had to win. Thanks, George Lucas. Next question comes from at Hardox50 who asks, are there any famous Stephanies? The only one me and my friend could think of was Stephanie McMahon. I think Lady Gaga's actual name is Stephanie. I think, but I don't think she spells it the same way. I think it's just an I. I don't know. Stephanie's not a real common name. 
I mean, it's it's more common than like clover or something, but it's less common than say like, I don't know, Emily or, I know a lot of Emily's growing up, or Sarah's, I know a lot of Sarah's, so there you go, yeah. Sure. If you know any famous Stephanie's, leave them in the comment section down below. I'm genuinely curious now, because I, I don't know that many besides Lady Gaga. Next question comes from CA Reverse WOT, who asks, do you have or want to have a 3D printer? I would love to have a 3D printer, but then I think I would be really stupid and print really stupid things with it all the time. So maybe it's best I don't have one, but yeah, I think it would be cool to have one. It would be a novelty item for me, because I don't have a lot of things that I need to 3D print regularly. I'm trying to think of things that aren't inappropriate right now, but oh god, I'm such a perv! Perv! Um, I would probably go with, yeah, if I needed to print like a tool or something like they do on the International Space Station, I would use it for that. Yes, that's what I would use it for and that's appropriate. Yes! God, such an idiot. Ah, this goes so bad. Next question comes from BMS Science Teach, who asks, did you have someone who helped inspire you to become an engineer? For me, it was kind of figuring it out on my own. I think my parents had said something about, well, hey, why don't you look into engineering when I was really young, or it might've been a teacher. I, I remember some point when I was like 13 or 14, somebody said the word engineer, and I started to look into different fields about uh, trying to figure out what I wanted to do. Because up until that point, I think I'd switched career choices like 17,000 times, which is what you're supposed to do as a little kid, so it wasn't a big deal. But I tried, I looked into chemical engineering and uh, might have been mechanical engineering, I think, when I was like 13, 14. But it wasn't until I was 15 in high school and I can remember where I was standing when the kid said it to me and some dude I was dating was like, oh, you know, I'm going to be an aerospace engineer. And I go, yeah, what's that? You know, and he explained it to me and it was just like, oh, this is what you want to do. Do this as a career. Great. So I did that. And actually, surprisingly, that kid, I don't think he did in aerospace engineering. He went to the Air Force Academy and wound up, I think, doing something in physics, which is really cool. It's a cool dude. But yeah, so I guess... Yeah, teachers and parents were my biggest influence on picking their career choice and then ex-boyfriend who said aerospace engineering is a thing. You should totally look into it, and I did. So, yeah. <laughs> Inspiring story! Aww. But in all honesty, I had a great support system. I had several teachers that were very, very special to me and really encouraged me in high school, and my parents were also very encouraging my family. So those were probably my biggest supporters but did I have one female engineer that I looked at and I said, yes, I want to be just like her? No, that didn't actually happen for me. And that's honestly one of the big reasons I started the stimulus. When I got to college and I realized the discrepancy, you know, that it's almost, I think it's not quite 25% women in STEM fields right now. And that actually really made me think and reflect back on my childhood and why that might be the case. And the fact is that when I was growing up, there were not a lot of very visible STEM females for me particularly. And so that was the reason I started the stimulus because there might be some girl growing up in a small town in the middle of a cornfield right now who doesn't have a visual idea of what a engineer looks like. For me, it was the guys that you see in the movies at NASA for like Apollo 13 to go back to that with like the white shirts and the black ties and the big thick glasses. And that's what I imagined as an engineer. And so that was what I wanted to change. And that's why I started the stimulus. So yeah, this got wordy stuff and things. Is it hailing again? But with that, that's all the questions I have time to answer today. So thank you guys so much for submitting them. I really appreciate it. If you really like science-y stuff and you want to see more videos like this, please feel free to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. I'm putting out videos every week to talk about the latest and greatest in STEM news. Like I said before, hang in there, guys. The video schedule will be back on track someday. I'm really working hard, but I appreciate all your like continuing support. It's been amazing, and I'm so incredibly appreciative. Uh, like I said, the move will take place early in December and then after that I should hopefully be able to get back on track but I am so excited to start this next phase of my journey and to bring you guys along with me it's gonna be great fantastic yeah but with that I hope you guys have a wonderful week stay well stay awesome and I will see you next time